Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> Radiant Team Shadow Demon. Dire Team Pick. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Betway WCA 2016 game number two of our final up at upper bracket opening series match. We've got Kai P going up against That's Elements so 1. First game going the way of Kai P in pretty convincing manner, but hey, who knows? Maybe game two could prove something different. I'm Zayori, joined again by Android. We're from Moonduck TV. Thank you for joining us. Annie, what's going on? How are you feeling here coming into game two? Hey, feeling good. We already got some familiar heroes on the field. We're switching things up. Everything is flip flop back and forth, so no more ultra super hate on on the unfortunate little uh, Pilai die or uh, yeah, little Bambo Shadow Demon. We'll see what's going down here. Kai P picking up the Marana first, so Sing Sing Marana. How are you feeling about that? Mm -hmm. Pretty good. I, I like first pick Marana in general. It's so safe in this meta, uh, especially on this patch. It it's just good it's objectively good and it always gives you that flexibility to throw a curveball at the end where nine out of ten times maybe eight out of ten times depending on the team that's going to be a core marana probably in the mid lane but you never know she can play a mean position four and be really good with those rotations so it's something that elements one are always gonna have to keep in the back of their mind as this draft continues here like shadow demon he's high prized high valued but um not that same level of versatility as like a first pick marana faceless void now picked up for kai p so we'll see if it's uh, a Bone 7 Void or uh, the offlane Void played by the Coon. Only time will tell. Now Venge, the second choice for Elements 1. I'm curious if Elements 1 will go for some Illusion Harassment with this uh, Shadow Demon. We talked about it last game, but, you know, the, the Terror Blade, Luna, Morphlings of the World. Maybe uh, what Kai P want to ban out here. That is one of the other great things about first picking Shadow Demon is you, you always are, are at least tempted to get rid of some of those classic Illusion heroes, even if you don't really think the other team wants to pick it luna shadow demon is still not fun to play against yeah i mean there's a lot of choices of things that combo well shadow demon can also just be great on his own i mean you can go through max out that shadow poison and get a decent amount of early game damage there's still a couple of really notable heroes still in the pool Beastmaster, no love for him just yet i'm surprised that hasn't been picked up or banned usually kaipi like to snap that up either yeah. uh, first or second round so we'll see if they're going to run that void in the offlane yeah i i agree um it's really open-ended, honestly. This is, like, for Kaipi, this is the dream. You get two really good heroes that can work in almost any draft. There aren't many times, like, man, this Marana pick is super bad. You know, same with the Faceless Void. They're both very versatile in their lanes, and I, I think that just sets them up to be in a, a pretty good position. Also a bit strange to see Elements 1 open with their two supports to get things started. Both of them a little more defensive uh, against the Chronos well... here. You've got Disruption as well as Swap to save people. Um... I mean... Core but it could be a position a one venge. Yeah, we actually did see it yesterday, so it it's possible. I I think for some reason unlikely, but we'll see. It's I don't know. When you're swimming with the big dogs, if you're going against Kaipi, you gotta kind of pull out everything you've got. And I know Corvenge uh, is pretty popular in the CIS region still, even in uh, this current meta. Hey, but so are, we'll are these they're... CIS players? No, it's EU, but similar. I mean, it, it's still done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not the rarest thing in the world. It's just one of those sort of like last game where they, they put themselves in this position where Elements 1 had to make plays, right? You've got this Enchantress and this Bounty Hunter, and you pick those heroes because you want to kill stuff, you want to use track, you want to be aggressive, control the map, all those kind of things. And I think Position 1 Venge is also a little bit of a strat like that where she peaks earlier than most other Position 1 heroes, and you have to capitalize on that. You have to play that classic kind of CIS Virtus Pro style where you run at them, you're unrelenting, you knock down towers, you take objectives, and you, you keep the game high tempo that is a way to win but i think that strategy is just difficult to execute with because if you mess up if you get caught by a bad chrono if the other team starts to win some of those mid-game fights all of a sudden that position one venge is not looking so scary against a position one void for example you know and now kai p they definitely watch ti6 here they pick up that sand king which was super super popular as an offlaner just going through and getting a ton done the caustic finale means he is so sustainable but i think it's gonna be run more as that position four and have uh faceless void played by coon in the offlane i've still like the coon what the, what the hell's going on with that what yeah we'll, ca we'll call up? him 33 if he wants to be 33, 33. we'll let him have that 
33. I always, whenever I see players with numbers in their names like that, I always wonder what the relevance is. You know, what's the story behind that? I know BZZ, for example, 633, it's because the numbers look close to the Cyrillic characters of his real name, and it's like, oh, that's kind of cool, actually. I like that. BZZ, 633, what is just regular 33? You know, that's what's baking my noodle. But who, speaking of noodles, Tinker, what up by Kaipi. Was that segue? All right, Andrew, we'll let you have that one. <laughs> So Blazers. Tinker picked up. Uh, I mean, there's still a round of picks and a round of bans to make this a little bit hard for Kaipi to execute. What do elements one need to do here to properly respond Spectre. to that Tinker? Spectre. Okay. All right. I mean, Beastmaster's a good start. You've got Vision. That's half the battle, trying to find him in the tree line. They will opt for an illusion carry. Kaipi obviously banned out the Morphling, but Luna left in the pool. Um... I mean, great with Shadow Demon. The Luna synergizes very well with the Elements 1 draft, right? If you just, like, don't look at the Kaipi side and look at all the Elements 1 heroes, you say, okay, well, there's a lot of good synergy here. You've got some Minus Armor from the Venge, a lot of physical from Luna, a good mix of magical damage, the Inner Beast to help synergize, and then late game, you've got great Illusion Harass. But you look at what Kaipi has, and I think they're very well equipped to kind of deal with that strategy. Blind from Tinker is going to be very strong this game. You've got incredible magic burst between Marana, Sand King, and Tinker. Pipe, BABs, that will be the name of the game for Elements 1, no doubt. But there's still that pesky Faceless Void who can catch any of these heroes, deal with the Luna. I, I think... I mean, not that Kaipi have easy heroes to play, because all of them have skill shots and it can be comparatively difficult, but I think in terms of team presence and how they move around the map, Elements 1 are, are going to have to be a little careful here. You know, it's like, how do they close out the game against a Tinker, Void, Marana, Sand King? Their high ground defense is just so good, even against the Illusion Harass. Yeah, I mean, Kaipi, they've got lots of options of what they want to do here. They're not really locked into any specific positioning, and Tinker has a variety of builds he can go. He can go for that fighting build if he wants to have, you know, really great high gun defense. He can go for the early pushing build if he wants to be a dirty little rat and let the rest of his team do the fighting. Elements one, I mean, they went for the Luna, so they feel confident in their push strat with the Shadow Demon. We'll see what their last pick is going to be to round things out, but uh, it, it better be uh, a hell of a damage dealer for the mid lane. Hmm, what could they grab here that would match up very well against Tinker? Um, I mean, this is one of those times where calling this last pick does have to do with the comfort uh, of the mid player and, you know, what he likes in this matchup. Makes it a little bit harder to predict, but I think they need some control. You know, again, like Venge and Beastmaster, pretty good at single target lockdown, but, um, you know, somebody like a Puck that could kind of tie this whole team fight together could be okay, but I do think they want something that scales a little bit more. Invoker could actually be a really good choice here. Forge Spirits for all the right clicks, you know, like a Zoo Strat. Um, does lane pretty well against the Tinker also. Yeah, I mean, that's um, definitely a possibility. I mean, there's like OD if they want to go right oh. straight damage and have less team fight control. Uh, they could also go for like a Death Prophet. That's a good mix between the two where she has some control, very survivable, pretty good damage. Also great pushing, so it does kind of synergize with that mid-game five-man Death Ball that Luna, Shadow Demon, Beastmaster already uh, want to do. They've got the double Aura Strat with Venge and Luna, so I think they want a hero that can come online a little bit early and join the five-man. And even though OD doesn't classically fit into that, all right, well, or... I'm totally wrong. They go with Ogre, so it is a... Core Venge. Yeah, but they've got Luna. So is it mid Luna, safe lane Venge? That's really strange. I'm Am very I... curious to see how they set up these lanes. Or the... it's a core ogre, which, I mean, could could be a thing. <laughs> There's a possibility I'm dumb, but do Elements 1 look like they have a level 1 Roche lineup to you? Yeah, actually. That's an interesting thought. Haven't really contemplated level one Roche in a while. Um, if they had a lone druid instead of an ogre, I would say absolutely. But with a lot of potions, they could probably do it. I mean, they've got decent auras to start things off. They've got yeah. summons, they've got tank, they've got um, yeah, a lot of damage. I, yeah, no, I'm I, thinking level I think one it's Roche. In the cards. I mean, I don't know if that's actually the strat they're going to do, They're going to do, but a, a possibility for sure. I'm more curious if it's core Venge or core ogre. And I'm starting I, to think it's, it's ogre. Venge. It's Venge. Dude, I will bet you a BZZ Pugna since you're all about that. All right, a BZZ Pugna's on the line. I like this. You think it's a core Venge. I think it's a core ogre. I'm actually 50-50. I, I would agree with you, but they have a Luna, and I think Luna mid versus Tinker is really weird. Weird. The the laser is so what is going to make it so hard for I mean, her to reliably last hit. I don't, and she's there. They can venge and, ogre in the mid lane, beastmaster off, and shadow demon Luna safe. 
Yeah, that's true. They could do some dual lanes to to compensate for it. I don't know. I'm, IB I'm are not taking feeling... their time here. I think they're feeling the same thing we are. Like, <laughs> what the hell are we going to deal with here? Do we need to pick something to counter this ogre? Is it just a one venge? It, it, it's a very un, like, strange draft from Elements 1 in that manner. So for yeah. IP, what do they need here? They have a very versatile lineup as well. Sand King could be a greedy four. He'd be the off laner. Um, they could put Void in the off lane or in the safe lane. Same deal with Marana. I mean, she could be the their position four, and they're looking for a safe laner here. This is completely open ended for Kaipi. They they could pick pretty much any position, um, and and set up lanes that can still work in in this scenario. Okay, so they take Witch Doctor, another hard support. We haven't seen too much Witch Doctor recently, but great sustainability, big damage. I like it, and they were lacking on physical damage. You know, it does synergize with the Chronosphere, and now this gives them something so that Elements One can't just buy a pipe and laugh as uh, all of their damage <laughs> gets absorbed. I'm really liking Elements One's creativity here. I think whatever they're doing, Kai P, aren't really able to read it out, and I think that is going to be a nice little advantage. Kai P are the more experienced team, uh, definitely the favorite to win this series, but I think if Elements One keep things interesting, keep shaking it up, I don't know if they can respond quick enough. <laughs> We'll see. Uh, like, like I said, even if, whether it's a core Venge or a core Ogre, um, there is execution to be had, and both of those are, are somewhat unconventional. Um, so... What's it going to be? Milan does usually play support. I think I might have won myself a BZZ partner set. <sighs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I mean, core Ogre is... I, I don't know how good it is. I'm trying I've, to. I've I'm seen racking mid my ogre. brain of last time I saw. I have seen a lot it. of mid ogre, and it's actually fine. Wasn't it Moo back in the day that really like once ogre started moving up in popularity? Not in the the current run, like maybe a year, year and a half ago. Wasn't Moo one of the players that was playing a lot of mid ogre? I forget which team he was on. Was it Root? Or that was the team that you always respect mm -hmm. ban ogre first because they would is put this, it mid is and this just before dominate Archon people. Days? Yeah, I think it was a while. It was a. Well, it was a good while ago, at least a year, if not a, a year and a half. But oh. um, I mean, Ogre can still be pretty scary if he gets farm. Uh, Aghanim Scepter on him is a really strong upgrade, gives him a lot of burst damage. I think I just, it's I, core Ogre. I, I think I think it's mid Ogre is what yeah. it is. Oh yeah, mid mid Ogre safe lane Luna. I, I just don't think you can lane Luna against Tinker. To me, that matchup <laughs> sounds terrible for the Luna, and especially like if you have a heart. Like let's say you have Medusa or someone in the safe lane. Okay, maybe the Luna doesn't have the best time in mid, but you want to make sure she gets experience, so she hits a fast level six, and then you can start using her spells or what have you. Okay, I can see that work, but in this lineup, they've got one true hard carry. Like if this game goes past 35 minutes, this Luna better be damned farmed if element elements <laughs> one want a chance to win this game so she's got eight freaking tangos man yeah risking her losing mid against tinker is just that is no one got any other risk. tangos i mean look Lynch at this just holding on to a this is a five orchard into mid lane they're ready to catch somebody it's not a roshan but this is pretty freaking weird so let's take a look at dire side what did they end up doing uh, with their setup sing sing takes the marana bone seven Will be the one to play the Tinker. It is an offlane void played by the Coon and Bambo. All right, he gets himself the Sand King. High expectations for the sexy Bambo Sand King. One of his yes. comfort picks for sure. All right, I am quite excited to see this. I think the Sand King's going to be fantastically executed. A lot of big question marks around the mid lane. No level one Roche, unfortunately, but uh, we've still got our, our mystery going down of what's happening here. But oh, Ogre's been, been swapped uh, out, so oh, looks like... Uh, We've still got some mystery as to who's going where. We'll see when the moon spawn. I don't know what's going on. Ogre yeah, they, now they has roaming heroes. items. They have swapped heroes. Venge and Ogre. You're right. They did. Swapped. So they were going to do a core Ogre and they changed their minds. All right. So I'll give okay. you a BZZ and then you give it back to me. Yeah, give me half of a BZZ <laughs> set. Just give me the crown and we'll, we'll call it even. So how are they doing these lanes? Venge mid with... L All right. So it's Luna, Shadow Demon, bottom. <laughs> Venge mid. You're so triggered. I'm not even triggered. I'm just confused. Oh, Courier Sight mid lane. Pay attention. Yep. Bambo's going for it. Got a healing salve on it. Oh, they juke him. He gets back in. He finds it. Now the Courier is guaranteed dead. They do unload the cargo, but Bambo with the early plays here. Very nice. Elements right now with two heroes in the mid, and they're, they're opting to sack the off lane. So Pylai Die and Sing Sing will have this to themselves. Single free farm. And Mitch will be able to free farm here as the Beastmaster in the jungle. Oh, Void is having a 
absolute bitch of a time down bottom. Able to leap off a little bit. The Shadow Poison, not gonna kill him off this time. I don't think so. Oh, no, well, not even. The level one, it's just so lackluster. Only well, 160 damage. Four stacks is still gonna do a, a decent splat, but yeah, it's it's gonna be tough for him to actually get up to wave, because there's so much punish. Yeah. Midlife. A little bit tough for the Void, but I... I feel like this favors Kaipi. Elements really need to hit this timing around the Beastmaster. To me, this is all about him getting the fast level 6. That's why you sack the offlane. That smoke rotation, he needs to find a kill. Use that to start his snowball and keep this high octane. If they can't do that, this laning setup will favor Kaipi overall. Even with the Faceless Void struggling, they've got everything else they want. The Sand King can farm, he can rotate. Marana will have a very fast Ags. And you don't see the Midas... Marana very often anymore, but could be a game where Sing Sing is tempted just because he has all this free farm. So mid Venge doing all right here. Already had to gobble up one of her shared Tango. She's in a bit of a tough spot if she takes any more damage here because she just doesn't have any more regen and doesn't want to eat up that Fairy of Fire right away. We'll see how much longer yeah. Ogre is able to guard this mid because his own experience is starting to take a nosedive. Right. First point in Ignite. I'll see what he grabs at level 2. We have seen some 0-2-2 build, or 0-1-1 oh. build at level 2. Nice play there from Bambo to snipe the rune. Um, but that first point in Bloodlust can actually be pretty helpful in these lane setups. It seems like Venge is getting bullied by the Tinker at least a little bit, though Bone7 is also just getting pushed back in the 1v2 kind of... 1v2.5 is the Beastmaster's even help, uh, helping control runes. Yeah, Beastmaster taking up that arcane was huge. If Tinker got an arcane there, then absolutely dead Venge. Yeah, or at least a, a zoned out Venge who's not going to be able to spend much time in lane. That's for sure. It's also interesting to see Sand King not playing more of a driver's seat role. He's been a very popular recently, but mostly as like a core off laner or the safe lane if you do an aggro try. Using him as kind of an uh, impromptu axe that's more da uh, magic damage based with the caustic finale to dominate melee heroes. Shadow Demon I saw that. the neutral. Okay. He, he bought out completely and just yeah, kind of sat a... there in the middle of it, let no, himself that's get the, nibbled that's on. That's the play, the free ticket back. Um, but. This is like the old school Sand King, where he's just going to be stacking in the jungle, actually leveling up Sandstorm at 2. This is a little bit different from what we're used to in this meta, and I'm curious how it's going to work for Bambo, if he'll be able to get that Blink Dagger and come online, or if this strategy will end up backfiring for Kaipi a little bit, because Tinker yeah. is is starting to lose this mid lane more and more. I mean, 9 denies on the Venge is, is significant. Tinker needs that experience. Yeah, I mean, he's still got some flexibility with his build. We'll see if he wants to level up the machines and be able to go for early travels and just bail out of mid and go uh, push whatever lane he feels like. Or if he actually wants to go for more points in the laser, more points in the missile, and start being able to chunk some heroes down. Yeah, right now it looks like he'll go for the kind of burst damage build. The other reason why I think March is less appealing is because he doesn't have a jungle to retreat to. The March build, you want to have one support stacking up the hard camp here and the medium camp here so he can just farm that all day, kind of like you would an alchemist, but Sand King's clear in those camps, so there's nowhere for Bone7 to go back and retreat to to use that March of the Machine. Uh, in that sense, I think he is a little bit bottlenecked into this build, and they can definitely make it work. It's not a bad thing, but... Oh, this is going to be big there. Ogre spent a solo smoke and himself a bamboo looking for the same style on the rune, this time not able to go through with the Borrow Strike, and there's actually no follow-up from the Ogre. Yeah, so... not much the Ogre can do. Also curious to see what build the Venge goes for. A lot of options with Position 1 Venge. Dragon Lance seems pretty good for her, but still, like, you know, S and Y is always an option. Aghanim Scepter, not too common, but I think it does have a little bit of a merit on this hero when she has the farm. Yeah, we haven't been talking a whole lot about this top lane here. It's pretty much been Sing Sing on the Marana, doing whatever <laughs> he feels like doing. Pilai Dai, finally getting a little bit of freedom to go and stack. Got a nice stack off there. Should get some decent experience off of that as well. Um, so this top yeah. lane's going very well for Kaipi, not feeling a whole lot of pressure yeah, just yet. Let me give you the cliff notes for the top lane. Sing Sing is killing creeps. That's about what's happened so far. Beastmaster, this is really his first rotation back in the lane, and I'm a little bit uh, surprised. Ooh, scan, revealing Milan here in the, okay. the corner. Beastmaster, oh, nowhere for the cast to bounce. This could still be a kill. He gets hit by the curse from the Witch Doctor. Sing Sing, shoot arrow, miss arrow. I think he still finds this kill. He'll die to the damage over time. First blood for Pylai die. It's a very late first blood. I think there's been a lot of attempts to go in this tinker mid, but... Why did he rotate up there, though? The beast ma the reason you jungle Beastmaster and sack the offlane is for that fast level 6. He's one of the fastest junglers that you can have right now outside of Enigma. And with him making that rotation up top, it kills that timing where he could just rotate and destroy this Tinker before he hits level 6. And now he's behind. It feeds a kill to the Witch Doctor. That is 
honestly a very costly first blood. That's way different from the ogre just getting picked off in the mid because they overcommit. There is a lot riding on the back of this Beastmaster to control the tempo, and now Mitch's tempos have been controlled the other way, Annie. This is such such so problematic. I'm so nervous for Elements 1 now. <laughs> Alright, I need you to take a couple deep breaths. I think it still happen, but oh Milan. god, Milan goes in. He wants to find something. Like Bambo this. easily able to punish the wave of Terror. Comes back out. Sandstorm to finish the job. There will be a uh, magic oh. missile turning things onto Bone 7, but I think uh, it's gonna be Vengeful oh. Spirit just booking it out of there as fast as he can go, so unfortunately a trade not so you going have to the way of Elements. Elements want a little bit of credit there. They have the right idea. You don't want to let the Sand King just stack and free farm. If you can, contesting it is huge. If you can kill him when he's low HP with uh, a dust or a sentry. There's a turnaround. That's huge, but hey, Bone 7 dies mid. Okay, double damage Venge makes that a little bit easier. A nice pick off there, much needed. Uh, Shadow Demon going in with his last little bit of health and mana just pops the disruption and just TPs out. Does not want anything to do with the rest yeah. of that kill. He was the setup and nothing else. But I, like I was saying, I think it's the right idea to try to contest, but so ner so uh, risky to just walk into the darkness like that and uh, you know just hope the Tinker isn't going to have the damage to deal with it. Looks like Luna is able to harass the uh, Void pretty effectively. And uh -oh. now they try to kill this stack. They're going back in there. There could be some bloodshed in the Moonlight mid lane. Shadow. And no ogres here. And they want Mitch. to go in. Mitch is a nice easy kill. The cask will bounce. He doesn't have a roar just yet. Yeah, he's maledicted. He's sandstormed. God. He does not get out of there alive. And now Ogre just kind of stumbling back towards the low ground. Might be cut out here. The Void, only level 5, needs one or two more creeps to get that level 6. And now he has yeah. it. He has the chrono, but Ogre is just too big of a boy to go on. Oh, man. That's a little heartbreaking for a 33 here. If one of those creeps had just died a little bit earlier, he could have found a freebie with that Chronosphere, I think, almost uh, guaranteed. But more backfires for Elements 1. Kaipi get the stack and the kill. But now Bone 7 swapped and stunned. Nice body blocks from the Venge, but I don't think it's enough. Now the cask will start bouncing around. Another great curse from Pylai dies. Sing Sing joins the party, and this Venge is guaranteed dead. Now Ooh. Milan comes back in. The Primal War gets used on Pylai die, but it might not even be enough for a kill. Mitch can can't secure it, the boar goes charging in, they don't find the kill, Kaipi only get one themselves, but that was Bone 7 that was initiated on, that worked out pretty well for them in the end. Yeah, I mean, Pilai Dai is sitting back, scraping by, no points in Voodoo Restoration, so he is definitely living life on the edge. Now, bottom lane, they're trying to go in, they want to get something done about this Void, who's going to be popping out of the disruption, he really wants the deny, and he's oh. not going to be able to get it, unfortunately. Yeah, close, I thought he had that one. Uh, unfortunate for him. Let's check in on our boy Sand King. Uh, they've been trying to mess him up and slow down his farm, but it seems like they haven't been able to do that at all. He's 1-0-1, brown boots level 5, oh, and 50 like, gold away from the Blink Dagger. Yeah, Blink Dagger City right there at 8.5 minutes on top it's of great. brown boots this is, is fabulous awesome. Timing. Yeah, if he was just completely left alone, it wouldn't have been too much faster than this. Uh, looking at the overall gold graph, not as much of a favor for Kaipi as you would think. A lot of that coming from this Luna, who uh, has been having a really good time. Safe lane, swift ending up against the Void. He's been farming away. Number All one right, on so net worth. Luna versus Marana, they've both had a relatively pressure-free laning phase. Which kitty cat is scarier? Um... They peak at different times. Late game, Luna is obviously way scarier, especially with a Shadow Demon, but that takes a while to come online. Uh, Sing Sing, once he gets the Aghanim Scepter, they have so much kill potential. You know, until Luna gets BKB, I think uh, Marana has the upper hand pretty much no matter how you reason it. Once the BKB comes out, a couple of those other core items where Luna's right clicks really hurt, that's where the Marana starts to fall off. Also a pipe for Elements 1. I, I really think a, a pipe earlier rather than later uh, could make a big difference. I mean, anytime you're against a Tinker, it's pretty good, but now you've got added damage from Marana, the Sand King. That magic resistance will make all the difference in the world. Smoke from Elements 1 might not find much here, though, Tinker walking nearby in the mid lane. Yeah, they're going in. They go for the swap. They go for the stun. They've got the lockdown for days. Look at the TP rotation, though. Can the Radiant get out quick enough? They are going to bring in Sexy Bambo. He's going to be sitting there channeling up his ult now. It might just be enough AoE damage to get the job done. There is going to be Fire Blast Milan. Unfortunately, it's stuck in place, and there's going to be Faceless Void hopping down, killing the Ogre. Venge might not be out of the clear yet. Bambo still chasing, does not have enough mana for a stun, but it's a three on one, low on mana, no TP, nowhere to go. The vengeful Spirit will be killed once more. Yeah, I mean, she she sits there and she buys an Iron Branch after death. That's a very uh, poor Venge at this point compared yeah. to what she was just a couple of moments ago. And 
you know, again, it's like Kaipi lose their Tinker, but they still get a two-for-one trade out of it. And normally you think, oh, they just killed the supports, but that's the mid laner. That eventual spirit death really hurts, like you were saying, and she is all about the momentum. Back-to-back -back kill, if they, oh. her, if they manage to kill her again, it could be crippling. Look at Pilai Dai here, having the time of his life. He's going to be going in. He might Good have night, hit up more than he can shoot here. Mitch is going to sit there, ready to roar, but he, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have any damage. He's going to be sandwiched in. Can Witch Doctor actually get the job done? Is able to get the Maledict ticked and will be able to get the kill, but does yeah. lose his life to the big old ogre. Yeah, very bold play there, but also uh, pretty heads up. He knew that the Primal War was on cooldown and there was nothing the Beastmaster could do to stop the channel. And now Sexy Bambo comes on his way to push this ogre back. Uh, very bold, but he does trade one for one. And with Beastmaster in the grave again, slowing down his tempo, slowing down the timing of that Necronomicon is huge. How, what, he doesn't even have a Necro book already? The last piece on the Courier, oh my god. He is uh, all aboard the struggle bus, dude. How is he so poor? For a jungling Beastmaster, this is really this is really lackluster. One, three, and one. I guess that kind of explains it. Uh, that death up top, I, like it, it really crippled what he what he could do. That's just, oh. Uh... We're still feeling the effects of that, that horrid death at level 5. Now, big ol' rotation in, Kaipi. They're grouping up, they want to do something. They've got the Chrono. We haven't actually seen a whole lot of Chronos coming out now, but there, there we is. go. It's on to two. They're going to be focusing down this Luna, which is the right play. Is there going to be anything to keep her alive? The Roar comes back in, 3-3 three, three trapped up. There's going to be missiles coming back up from Bone7 on the back lines, but unfortunately the Void drops, the Luna drops, everyone's starting to go down. Nice re-engage there from Bambo and the laser to finish things off. So it's a one for two. Getting down the Luna was super crucial there, and, you know, Void died after his Chrono was put out it's fine yeah i mean luna gets the kill first so she does benefit from that fight uh, a little bit more than they would have liked one for one for two still okay for kaipi that would have been devastating if there was a sand king ult available when that fight started and if they could have gotten off a, a death more that is a dream chrono right there you lock in the enemy heroes in tower range so luna is getting all this extra damage from the tower that's like as good as it gets for a chrono at 12 minutes but unfortunately kaipi just can't capitalize as much uh, as they would have wanted. Oh, and smoke Luna wrapping back around. Kill. They really want to engage on mid, but I don't think they have enough bodies to get anything done, so... Moonlight, Moonlight shadow, shadow and a smoke. Yeah. Wow. Radiant making sure they've got vision here on the high ground. They really want this tier 1 tower. And this is pretty costly. I mean, this is all of elements grouped up, and I guess to be fair, Kaipi are still pretty grouped up as well. Yeah, I mean, they got the Tinker doing Tinker things in the back lines, but yeah. we'll see who's the I first mean, to jump. We got a good old standoff going here. Right. Kaipi farming a little bit more. So I feel like Elements are thinking, hey, there's no Chronosphere. Maybe we should fight. But Kaipi are also thinking, well, there's no Eclipse, and that is the only reason they're able to get a kill last fight. So, hey, maybe we should fight. But neither team really wants to initiate it because their big spells are down. So it truly is this stalemate, both sides just looking at each other across the river, yeah. kind of playing this game of chicken. Like, are you, are you going to go? Yeah. yeah. No, no. You're not going to go? Okay, well, we're not going to go. And Venge is just farming away. Might be able to find a swap here Venge if wants this to void go. isn't careful. He wants to go onto the tower. They've got some follow-up here. Witch Doctor now coming back in. Has that Death Ward at the ready. So if they can go, if they can land in Impale and temporarily disable the Radiant Heroes, then there is a ton of damage coming out from Kaipi. That's what they're looking to do. They are going to go in the Deny. Again, not there. So Kaipi a little bit off the mark when it comes to those tower denies. Venge now, looks so buff with the Bloodlust. It's she actually ridiculous. She looks, looks huge. Pretty <laughs> awesome. She is straight Amazonian. Yeah, and really. In terms of her item build, it feels like she just doesn't have a whole lot. Her net worth isn't terrible, but is she going to yeah. translate that into polished items? I mean, at some point she has to. Is there something on the courier to be delivered? That is the Necronomicon for Mitch. So, no, it's just a, a relatively underfarmed, vengeful spirit. I mean, Ring of Aquila, Magic Wand, Power Treads. She has a lot of good items that provide a lot of value, but this is where you want to start moving into something that give you a, a little more meat on those bones. I think Dragon Lance is the uh, next item of choice. Oh, she will move in onto Bone 7. Poor buddy. He does have his BOTs, though, which he picked up right before that death. So that one hurts a lot less than the others, at least now. He's got the big item to start moving around the map and getting his farm going on. That, that's the big uh, benchmark or milestone, I guess you could say, for the Tinker. But not all bad for Bone7, even though he's had a, a bit of a rough start here. All right, now Luna just chilling around. She has one kill, one death. Not a huge game impact so far. And, I mean, she's picking up that point booster. So are we going to see Luna Ags just focusing on getting the most damage possible out of the ultimate? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, from which hero? Luna. Oh, Luna Ags. Wow. When you I said mean, that, I thought you were theory crafting about it, not he had a point booster already. Nah, that's um, why I started off with he has a yeah, point booster. Um, 
Wow. Yeah, I don't I've know what to I've make of this. I've seen it before. I've seen... It's cool. It just doesn't scale that well. It's definitely good. I, I think it's better than your average player would give it credit for. You know, it sort of has that reputation as being a, a kind of a joke. It increases the beam. It removes the max beam count, increases the total beams, and makes it buffable. You can put it in an area or on somebody else. So that part is kind of neat. When you think about how they've been playing with the Venge, you know, she can swap in with the Luna ult on top of her and do a lot of damage. That That's some cool synergy there. Yeah, is I mean, game winning, I... though, is another question. <laughs> that I'm not sure about. I've seen it combined with an ethereal blade just to go and ruin someone's day. Hey, there's a Corona coming back in. They're going to be focusing on. They want to go on the bench. Time dilation spray to onto all four heroes. Highlight Eye with a great ult to follow up. They've got so much damage. Everyone's dying. And now they're wow. going for the chase here. Shadow Demon, one of the last survivors they're going. They're trying to just beat up everyone, but Ogre's able to TP back to the well. Shadow Demon, probably not so lucky, is going to get just shoot on. There's nothing yeah. you can do. So that's going to be a four for nothing. Huge. Cost Kaipi a lot of spells, but that is absolutely worthwhile. That is the dream setup for them. Chrono into Death Ward, into Epicenter. It doesn't really get too much sweeter than that. Um, and if your elements, it's hard to deal with. That's sort of why I'm looking at this Agonims on Luna like, yeah, it's cool. It has some uh, it has some options. Maybe they'll get some kills, but it doesn't stop that. It doesn't matter even if she has a BKB. Um, that kind of fight is Always Mid? gonna be a threat for elements. And now Milan, yeah, that's just a free kill. Hey, Kaipi just ran him down. Now Swift um, ending TP's in. Um, what is going on here? That okay. was okay. He's got yeah, friends. <laughs> Sing Sing will die. It's not all bad, but that was that was bold, Cotton. I guess they knew a lot of their CD or, or spells were on cooldown, so maybe not as risky as it looked, but bravery for sure. Yeah, I mean, it takes grapes to TP into all that nonsense, and in the end, they are able to get a Mirana. So, again, not worthless, but Elements now definitely playing from a huge deficit. Look at the net worth. It just fell off the cliff oh, after wow. that last fight. Yeah, that's like the, the slide they had at the Summit 5, just straight downhill, baby. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so now we are going to see a blink into the pit. Bambo could be in a bit of Bambo, trouble. Bambo, what a player, though. He breaks the smoke, scouts out the Roche, and makes it back to the high ground unscathed. That is that is a sexy Bambo play right there. It's like, oh, you guys are smoked up. Cool, no big deal. I'm just going to break it and walk away. And Ele look at Elements. They're like, all right, well, that backfired. We're out. See you later. That was that was sick, dude. Come on. Yeah, yeah, give this Sand King some love. Sexy Bambo. What a player. <laughs> yeah, that was... I don't think he intended to have that good of a play, but... Oh, it was in the intentional. End, worked Trust out. Me. Now, okay. That's he's a gonna... Bambo play. He's got that game sense, dude. He's thinking... He gets in the head of the enemies. He's like, guys, going ferocious right now. Watch this. And then he goes in, sees the smoke. I bet he was lolling like crazy. I wish we had right. access to the team speak. Oh, it would have been so great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a fun time. I've heard a couple of teams via team speak, and they sound way different than you expect. Now, mid lane, there is going to be a tower initiation here, trying to go get that last hit. Let's see if Witch Doctor can secure it. Oh, which just creeps. Either way, Pile I die. Raking in the cash here. As a support, he's just feeling on top of the world. Yeah. Especially after those plays he made, like trading those kills for a Witch Doctor, trading one for one with his ult against Beastmaster is amazing for his bottom line. Definitely not surprised to see that he's uh, doing well in terms of farm. So let's just take a moment here and look at the replay uh, of that. Never mind, we're not going to do that. I take that back. We're not looking at replays. I don't know what False happened. promises, I already... Ugh. False promises, dude. Tisk, it really tisk, is. boy. Either way, we're going to have Radiant kind of doing their best to clean up. We have Elements trying to get the most out of that Luna Shadow Demon synergy just to clear out the jungle, keep the waves pushed. But, you know, we talked about the need for Elements to just kind of play that CIS-style Dota and light the map on fire and just go in, constantly apply pressure, constantly apply push, because Kaipi really do shine if you give him too much space. And, I mean, look yeah. at Sing Sing. Has he felt any tiny bit of pressure the entire game not really his I, only death came from so. when he leaped into an unopportune fight yeah absolutely um blink dagger on the way for him so his burst a little more controllable and i think still feeling pretty good for kaipi the one game changer is bkb on luna but i mean how much of a difference does that make given that she's not going this right clicking build uh, that is one of the drawbacks to you know dragon lance uh, Agonims, it turns her into a glass cannon, and well, it it just makes it hard to execute with. There's no other way to say it. You know, if they get the jump, sure, they're going to be able to blow somebody up, but if Luna gets jumped on, if she gets hit by an arrow, even if she gets stunned by the Sand King, how does she stay alive to even get the ultimate off? There are so much disable, so much burst damage on Kaipi that I think when you go with a build like this, you really run the risk of just getting blown up before that upgraded ultimate can even make a difference. 
All right, it's a big moment here in the game. Everyone's alts are up, and we talked a little bit about how the game is so flux and flow around these big alts, but I mean, it seems like both teams are ready. They're grouping up. They're kind of be uh, walking together to make sure they can't scout anyone, but oh, Dyer down bottom, Radiant up top. So far, no huge 5 on 5 engagers. Roshan is still up. I'm surprised it hasn't been more of a hot topic. Yeah, it's, okay there, it's true. No, I'm just, you know, you know how Twitch chat is usually just mindless spam, then every so often there's that one line that you're like, that's actually pretty funny. That guy's pretty good. <laughs> oh, don't <laughs> encourage them, Andrew. What are you doing? Oh, it's, you know, every so often they just hit that zinger just right. Like <laughs> at, at the beginning, I saw a good one and you said, you know, Elements 1 are really creative and sometimes creative stuff can catch people off guard. And somebody was just like, lol, <laughs> creative. They just fucked up their draft. Be honest. <laughs> Damn, too soon, dude. Too soon. Brutal. <laughs> Oh, jeez, okay. The perfect okay. timing, you know, little, little little, guys like that just make me smile sometimes. So, Blink Dagger up on Sing Sing. Once more, <laughs> Elements 1 will try to take out this dreaded Tier 2 tower that cost them so much pain in the fight prior. They will bring it down, but Kai P, some nice split push, taking out the Tier 2 mid as well as bottom. Not sure if they're actually going to be able to finish them off. Elements 1 can push very quickly, so they will come back to prepare for this high ground defense, but this is where Kai P really shine. They do so well when they have a high ground bottleneck like this. Even just Tinker alone is hard for them to deal with, and then you compound that with Epicenter, Chronosphere, it gets very difficult very fast. Pylai die, kiting the creeps around, and they will end up trading two for one in terms of towers. Great defense, only a little bit of chip damage on the tier three. Ends up being another good trade for the Dire Squad. Yep, I mean, again, the entire time, Sing Sing has been playing his own game. Like, I'm half sure that he's just sitting back blasting some music with his earphones in, just ignoring what's going on, because he's just had such a successful time roaming around, pushing lanes, uh, not necessarily needed to yeah. fight and initiate with his team. I'm he's got that Ags, he's got Blink, he's got 2,000 gold. So he's what does fine. he get next, though? I mean, normally you see Marana start to transition into survivability at this stage. Like, Lincoln's is a very common item after this. He might go BOTs, so he has more mobility for a split push and just to get into fights. Um, honestly, Veil is not a bad idea. They're far oh. enough ahead that he could go for an item that buffs up their damage and it would just synergize so nicely with the Tinker Sand King. I think someone should buy a Veil this game. I don't know that it has to be the Marana, but Sing Sing seems pretty well positioned to pick it up. All right, now up top, there's just going to be Mitch teeping out underneath Sexy Bambo's nose, but he's content just to sit back and farm. 2,000 more gold on the Sand King. What's his next option? Let's see, what's he got here? He already has the Force Staff, possibly an Aghanims. Uh, Yule's Scepter can be a good item on him. If there's any kind of silence, usually Yule's is what you'll see Sand King go for. Still a good item just to give him that chasing power, the extra movement speed, some catch if he's able to blink in, stun, his team can't close the gap. Sometimes the Yule's uh, prevents the getaway. I, I think Yule's or Ag's, probably my top two, or the Veil. He could also be a good Veil carry. It really... To, to me, it doesn't really matter who gets the Veil. I just think somebody should get it. Um, I also like that Pylai Die went for the Force Staff. Sometimes it's tempting for Witch Doctors to try to go for uh, an Aghanims for the big damage, which can be great, but he's going for more uh, survivability, utility with the Force Staff. You know, like a Glimmer Cape next item could be very good on him as well. Or a Blink Dagger. All right, so it looks like everyone's still ready to engage. We haven't seen another big fight. Is I mean, Roshan's still just chilling here. He's having a very relaxing time. Finally, Kai P ping out the pit uh, with a Luna, with a Faceless Void, with a Marana. I'm really surprised you haven't seen more action there. Yeah, things definitely slowing down a little bit. Luna with her prized Aghanim Scepter, another 2k gold, so maybe BKB will come out next. The thing that I don't know about this Luna Ags build, I mean, I've, I've seen it mostly in kind of like troll scenarios, or when you have an alchemist and it's like, alright, panning out Aghanim Scepters, here you go, Luna. I don't know that I've ever cast a game where it's like, Dragonlance Ags, this is our strategy, I'm well, going okay. magic burst damage. So how do you transition now? The one Blink time dagger? I've seen this uh, was in WCA. I want to say Wings ran it, and it was horribly, or in a, rather DPL, horribly unsuccessful because it was a position for Luna uh -oh. that built first item Ags on top of Brown Boots, then Ethereal Blade. And just, okay, e Blade. It, was, hmm. it went like 1 in 16. I mean, am I overhyping the Veil? Is like, is like that the next item? Because... Once you hit level 16 with the Aghanims, it just doesn't scale anymore. So do you use this to try to get an edge in the mid game and then transition into the classic right-click carry Luna? Like, we see Marana's do that sometimes. And if a game goes really long, she'll eventually sell the Aghanims in favor of, you know, Butterfly, MKB, BKB, these sort of classic right-click Marana items. So there is a good transition point, but I'm just curious 
what exactly they have in mind and, and how they want to use it. If that is the strategy, they haven't really used this Agonims to much avail in the mid game. They'll smoke up now as I say that and maybe look to find a gank, but Kaipi have found a lot of big items in the meantime. They now have four Blink Daggers, Annie, as well as the completed <laughs> Agonim Scepter on Bone 7. So we've got lasers and rockets for days and harder to deal with. And they're just going to move into the Roche Bay. This is nice and sneaky. Oh, I think what Necro units on the high ground? Is that intentional? I think not. What, uh, for a what? moment, I was like, oh, he's scouting for wards. I'm like, nope, you don't need the, the Necro you units on the high ground to find a little, the wards. A little bit too close to the pit there, and uh, unfortunately clipped his own Necro. So the air is going to fly through, going to latch onto Roche, so Radiant say thank you. But they are going to have to back out, as uh, Radiant are unsure how many so, Kaipi heroes are sitting on the back lines. Yeah. Uh, good play from Sing. Oh, oh, the Chrono comes back in, but there's going to be a disruption on the Luna to try to buy himself some time. Leap up, free three onto the high ground. It's going to get swapped back down. There's the Luna! Oh! My combo was so much damage! Oh, God, that looks like it hurts. Three down on Sexy the side of Element. They're going to finish off four. Bambo. My God, that was the dream. Sand King, all right there. It just crippled their entire team. It went from a team fight to Sand King just killed everyone. Look at he did 2,000 damage in the blink of an eye that fight. Oh God, that was devastating. The Luna Eggs, she did a total of 300 damage in that team fight. How is that even possible? I don't believe you, team fight recap. I don't believe you. That's All I know is I feel like I need to go take a shower because that was some dirty play by Kaipi. They went in and they just shredded elements with no regard for their friends and family. Guys. Yeah, was... I mean, just insane team fight. At first, it seemed like the Chrono might not have been the best. Um, he only caught one, but it did force out the disruption straight away. And it was just enough of a distraction where elements didn't seem entirely sure if they wanted to just retreat and leave their Luna high and dry or if they wanted to commit to the fight and try and keep her alive. And that moment of hesitation opened up the opportunity for Bambo to set up that huge ult and do crippling damage. And of course, the Tinker just spamming across that whole time um, also really adds up. So now Roche goes the way of Kaipi. They pick up the Agonims, or Jesus, the uh, Aegis of the Immortal on Sing Sing, <laughs> who also has a completed Lincoln Sphere. So he has gone for this more... Eggs. <laughs> <laughs> that would be broken. Uh, but he has gone for this traditional just Lincoln Sphere build. It is pretty good this game, to be fair. A lot of single target. Um, and the regen also really helps. Marana does have some sustainability issues, so, you know, Lincoln's very good for that kind of stuff. All right, so sitting back mid lane, we could have a little bit of an engage here as there is the swap available on the Vengeful Spirit, but Sand King, obviously a, uh, a very ambitious target to go after. We'll see where the next action's going to break out, but for now, Kaipi are pretty content with their position. Overall net worth is going to be about 14,000 in their favor, uh, XP 15,000. How did Kaipi finish the job? How did they go through, Ugh. rip off the band-aid, get the high ground act? I mean, at this point, they really just need to win one or maybe two more team fights, and, and they can just do it. Bone 7, oh no, he blinks right into him. They were ready and waiting for it. Mitch had a bird on the high ground, but Tinker, he kills one before he goes down, and Pylai die. He's ready to join this party. He drops the Death Ward, and they trade two for one elements, trying to go Yu-Gi-Oh style with the trap card, but it backfires. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in the end, overall positive trade and elements now have to run backwards. Kaipi, they're ready to go. They're ready to get the job done. But do they have enough bodies in the area? Leap forward. Bambo really... Oh, God, nice the Lotus. Lotus Orb. He's able to go and stun oh, up Bambo bench. up He's top. Dial points for Luna's days. Luna's dead? Nope. Okay, TPN should She's be okay. fine. <laughs> Going in. Um, all right. Okay, well, that's the, that the end of little. Void. Yeah, I mean, again, it's cool. Like, that's flashy. Yeah, you kill the Void with the ult, but... Oh, they could go for another here. That's actually going to make it definitely worthwhile. Sing Sing in some trouble, leaping back, wants to go, wants to just bail out. Throwing out everything left and right. Pylai Dai coming back in. There's a BKB, though. He's going to be sitting there taking a whole big chunk of damage from that carry Venge. But he's actually going to juke his way through the trees. The Voodoo Restoration keeping him up. Sing Sing might be the one to fall. Age is triggered. Can Pylai Dai come back in the fight in a convincing manner? Oh, hell yeah. Now they got Bambo in the picture. They're going to be going back on in. They get the Venge down. Now Sing Sing leaps forward. They want to get more. There's a BKB triggered by the Luna as she runs away. Is she going to be able to get back to high ground safely? Looks like it. But unfortunately, Milan, not going to have the same fate. Sing he's going to be trying to juke around the trees. Missile finishes the job. Meanwhile, on the back lines, there is going to be a roar. They're trying to get down Sing Sing, forced down to the low ground. There's going to be a nice little burrow strike to lock down oh. Mitch and ensure the Marana's survival. Ambo again, nice use of the Force Staff Tinker, getting to the point where he's just hard to deal with. Bone 7 can come in, drop his rotation, rearm, drop it again, and then just go back and regen and reset the fight. Um, Kaipi are just getting way too far ahead here, Annie, and soon closing out this game is, is not going to be hard for them. 
Luna using her ult just for single pickoffs. I mean, two BKBs debuted right there, the Vengeful Spirit and the Luna. I think they were both the 10 second charges. Sorry, that was the nine second charge on Vengeful Spirit, but very costly BKB uses and it doesn't provide them anything. I mean, Venge used it to try and find a kill, but the best they got was just finishing off the Aegis. Have we talked about the Void Scepter yet? We have not. I haven't really checked in on Void too much, but Blink Eggs, all right, this is pretty cool. Yeah, definitely not your traditional not Void anymore, build. I mean, it, it used to be your standard off lane, like you are a Chrono in a can. All you do is Chrono, get the most out of your Chrono. But I, I think mean, it's good here, though. I really yeah. like it. Have we? Have, did you see that Roche fight with the Chrono into the Epi? Yeah. I mean, it's just such a core part of their team fight and what they want to do. Having the Chrono on a 60 second cooldown really opens up a lot more possibilities for Kaipi. All right, you know, everyone just sitting back again, resetting Kaifi, perfectly content to make sure their ults are nice and ready. Their next round of items are picked up. What are they waiting on to just run and siege the high ground? Do they have to wait for next Roche? Are there key items they're sitting uh, on? Or let's what? see how long. It's a while till next Roche. I think they might just be waiting for the opportunity. Right now, everybody just farming. Is there a next big core item on the horizon? I actually don't see one. They've got a pretty complete kit right now, so it's just a matter of timing. Perhaps they are thinking about next Roche. They're also in such a position where there is zero onus on Kaipi to end this game, right? They are in well, good shape. They... Luna's scary. Not when she's gone for an Aghanim. Like, at this point, you know Luna's not going to scale like a normal carry. Like, just straight up, her right clicks are not on par to where they would be if she had gone for a traditional build uh, with, like, a Manta style or something instead at, at 30 minutes. And their high ground defense is amazing. Their team fight is really good. The Radiant team still Oh, there's the fight. Pipe. Down bottom. They're jumping in. They are able to go force out the bench BKB. She goes for the missile, but again, there's going to be the Lotus Orb. They really can't attack her with much. And there's going to be a Fire Blast sprayed out every which way. So, forcing out some big spells from Elements. And they've really got to make sure the elements are now that all BKB, in, all focused. Man, forcing out the Venge BKB and not getting anything out of it hurts so much. It's down to seven seconds and the item has provided so little value. I don't know. I, I think Kaipi are just slowly but surely getting to that point where they want to take fights, but not forcing it. LeBron just gets destroyed. And that, that's how easy it is for him. They just blink in, burst somebody down, and walk away. That was yeah. in the enemy base, by the way. It's not like the Shadow Demon's <laughs> way overextended. They just jump in, say goodnight, and we're out. Meanwhile, Mitch is just kind of going for a relaxing hike through the trees. He's, he's still his playing Yu-Gi-Oh up here. He's trying to catch this Tinker, but I don't know, man. I don't I don't think this trap card's going to work out so well. The Tinker is really oh, getting scary. Oh, bottom lane. They're jumping all in. Bambo channeling the ult. They've got the Krona to follow up. All it is is just a tool to hold everyone in place. There's the Luna dropping her ult. She's actually doing a fair amount of damage. Sing Sing's gonna be down to drop, and now the rest of the team will be able to hop out. They lose their Sand King, they but lose their Mirana, but on the back line, yeah, they've got nothing. <laughs> they got no BKBs. It's a losing beam to stun up the void, but I, I think Still this might be a TP good. back they... in Shadow Demon looking for something. They have the catch with the disruption if they can land it, and they they're gonna be going in the finish. blink forward. They are able to get the disrupt off the Necro there to cause some havoc, and there's gonna be a couple more bits bye, of bye, damage die. coming out. Wild axes. Oh gosh, Void able to get the job done onto the Shadow Demon, and now 33 in some trouble, leaping back out, but forcing five axe and living through the onslaught. Kai P are in a perfectly fine position. Uh -oh. Look at Tinker, he's just cruising. He, oh yeah, he's still spamming rock. Nobody bought back on elements, so they at least have that going for them. But part of that is because they're just too broke. They don't really have a lot of buybacks to go around. Uh, a pretty convincing team fight for the Radiant, though. You look at that net worth change, and it's a 2k gold swing. And there, there is some legitimacy to the Aghanim's Luna. It, it does huge burst damage like that, but again, it's just so isolated on such a long cooldown. It, I, I see that as great. You extended the game a little bit longer, but what's the play to transition that into a Roche or into an actual tier 3 tower kill? As soon as that fight was done, after they killed the two, there was still a Tinker there ready to do massive damage when their BKBs were down, and they still have no answer for that. I mean, maybe Kai P need a pipe for themselves to deal with this Luna ult. At this point, seeing how much damage it did there, I think it's it's somewhat warranted. Also, when did Pylai die get an Aghanim Scepter? You see how much damage he did there? He's also level 16. Like, this Witch Doctor Death Ward's proving so effective. I think he's had that thing for like a decent while now yeah he's, he's sitting back he's like having a a really nice witch doctor game from basically the laning phase when he sat up top with sing sing and just kind of stacked jungle with not a care in the world he's been he's been doing great now we yeah. see if kaipi are able to go and actually end the game at some point because if this does go ultra late yeah shadow demon luna becomes a bit of a threat i i honestly don't think it becomes that scary this game tinker is just 
Tinker versus Luna in a 1v1, it's all about initiation, but it just takes catching her once without BKB after he has Hex, and, and that's that. Bone 7 does get caught by Mitch. This time, the trap card works out. He spent so much time hiding in the trees trying to catch the Tinker. Meanwhile, Bambo in some trouble. Gonna be going in. He's actually gonna be on the aggressive here. They want to go back in. LeBron, he gets the blink away, but will unfortunately tick down. All right. Finale Good strong. trade for elements. That's, that's nice. But what will it yield? And they actually put some pressure on here. Kai P coming back to make a defense. A lot of BOTs on this dire side also. Three pairs. So it is kind of easy for them to deal with this split push. They have a lot of options in terms of getting heroes back to the base. Oh, going back in. They oh, really no. want to get the job done. Leap in. They get a mini stun there onto the Luna, but she's got her ult ready if she really wants to unleash on this. They are going to bring the time dilation. There's the ult. Pop down the Chrono. There's no vision. She can't do any damage with it. Oh, that's not good at all. That's a BKB long ulti cooldown wasted, and she just that, drops. That's, that's game like almost losing. game right there. That's... She has no buyback, BKB down, no ult for a minute and a half. Might not be the end of the game here, but they either get Roche or they're going to get top lane of barracks. I mean, that is just almost as bad as it gets, I think, for Elements 1 in that scenario. I mean, maybe two people could have died in one oh, instead of one. Oh, Vengeful but... Spirit. There's going to be a TP coming back in. Oh my golly gee. That's everyone. The OTs, back baby. In. She's, uh, yeah, this is, this is game. Yeah, well done by Bone7. He drops the blind. Now Milan on the run, but they're out of resources. It's just too much damage. Now three heroes in the grave. No buybacks available. Kai P with all five still alive. Pressing through the enemy jungle, and they are going to beeline it down to this bottom lane of barracks, I think. Forget about Roche. They don't need the Aegis. They're winning these team fights left and right. Still 80 seconds till Luna's up. Uh, Luna's ult up. Jesus. Luna's ult is up anyway, and that is the scariest part of the Elements draft. If that's not available, I don't think they can really find these kills. Yeah, it seems like Kai P posturing to actually go through and push the high ground and get buildings this time, because they've had some fun. They've had their Tinker up past the Tier 4 is trying to spray out missiles, but no actual siege onto the buildings. Now there is going to be the leap up. Void sitting there in the wings, He's waiting the with his Chrono. Oh, so much hate for Shadow Demons, man, but he does end up catching the Luna as well. If they can follow up, they can kill the Luna. That's huge. She ain't got no buyback. Oh, that poor kitty cat is going to be in a miserable position. Gets the smashed bash. through the BKB. She makes her way back to the well, but I don't think there's really anything she can do. The Roar's coming Committed. Sexy Bambo locked in place, but he's going to be four staff back. Oh, God, the Dagon, Bone 7, Tinker, Dagon, it hurts. I'm not focusing Ow. on the tower, but they don't need objectives. BKB popped by the Venge. Luna survived. Ultimate up in 25. They killed the Void. That's something. Now Moonlight Shutter to disengage. I mean, Kai P kind of just having fun with it there, honestly. They could have gone for structures, and instead they went for hero kills. Not too eager to end this one, just happy to demoralize their opponents, it seems. Yeah, I mean, they're they're just grouping up, like you mentioned. They're not on a strict timer. Again, chrono, like, though. 75 minute Luna is scary, but at this point, Sing Sing still has plenty minutes. of time before he's losing any power. Yeah, that was a sick chrono, though. You really want to catch the Shadow Demon, because he's the one hero that can reset and keep somebody alive in there, but just getting that Luna in the back line and isolating her from the rest of the fight is the cherry on top. Using some illusions on the dire side, getting some sure damage into the ranged barracks, and now Kaipi looking to retreat. And I would imagine they move into the Roche pit, pit pretty soon. I think Aegis of the Immortal makes this this siege a lot easier. Yeah, I mean, I think it just gives you more tools to play with. Like you mentioned, Kaipi, they're definitely feeling secure. You look at the overall net worth. We are just about twenty-five thousand in favor of uh, of Kaipi. Yeah. They're not going to be losing any huge traction anytime soon. And remember, there's still a ways to go for this Tinker. He's only at Dagon level 2, can still pick up um, the Scythe of Vice for the ultimate late game Tinker. He is really scary and not even capped out yet. KP moving into the Roche pit. Aegis on the way. Vlad's even up on the Faceless Void. Looks like Elements 1 will not even be able to contest this. All right, so Roshan going to be melting down. No real contest. There's really no way Radiant can get involved in this. They're just smoked up, trying to get something done in this top lane, maybe trying to go for a bait. Maybe they think Kaipi are there, but at this point, they've got to just get their farm, get back, and start defending their structures. Mm -hmm. I don't think they'll be able to split push this so easily. Manta Style now out on Luna. Starting to get to that Luna state that we're recognizing, where she's a little bit more of a right clicker. Level 20, still pretty decent net worth. I am pretty impressed at how well uh, Swift Ending has been able to farm this game. 
given that his team has been under so much pressure from all this team fight. He's still number two on net worth ahead of the Tinker. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's doing his job. He's trying to find something here, but now Mitch might be caught out here. There is going to be a rotation back in. They've got to find something. Oh, nice blink away. The Mitch is going to be able to TP out, but still, he's just trying to make space. He's trying to occupy the Zen King, trying to maybe bait out a couple of resources while the rest of his team kind of cowers behind their tier threes. Alrighty. Stalemate continues. Kaipi very clearly not in a hurry this go around. They used the Moonlight Shadow looking for an opportunity to pick somebody off. Couldn't quite find it and they will just group up and starve the map, clearing out the Radiant Ancients. And over time, they're just going to pull further and further ahead. Elements 1 don't have a single ward down outside of their base except for this guy over on the side. And uh, they are pretty timid moving out of their base. Beastmaster's picked up a Shadow Blade. He's also carrying a gem. Sexy Bambo, gem carrier for the Dire Squad, killing any wards that Elements 1 drop down outside of their base. Very limited options. Yeah, it seems like now, Kaipi, they've got all their lanes pushing in. They're going for the Strangle. They're just trying to completely suffocate them from, from top, from bottom, having a fight in mid. I think it's going to be a, a GG push very shortly. I would imagine. They still have pretty good time on the Aegis, about four minutes. Oh, wow. Okay, Mitch, this is not where you want to be. He Shadow Bladed up, but they've got the gem on Bambo again. There He's able is. to go through. He latches. Beastmaster, you say goodbye. Can they keep him locked down before the roar comes out? There's going to be the Lotus Orb. He doesn't want to go through and scream at himself. No. The Chrono completely whips. Time dilation catches out. Maybe Mitch can get the scream off, but no. Going to be knocked up. There's going to be absolutely no roar coming back in. They lose a huge chunk of their control. There's the Luna ult doing a ton of damage, but is it going to be enough? I don't think so buy back from the sand king sing sing just eating the loosen themes it doesn't hurt him that badly two heroes dead beastmaster has buyback shadow demon just hits the deck right there as tinker shows off that agatim scepter bouncing around and the right idea from kai p though the buyback from bambo makes a lot of sense they saw this as a potential game ending push with luna's ult down bkb's down they had some options as soon as they start to go high ground two buybacks straight away from elements one that does tip this fight in favor of kai p three for one Two buybacks compared for one, and they, they will get the better of it. And they still have the Aegis of the Immortal on Void with some decent time left. I think Kaipi could go back, regen, and then try to force another fight with the Aegis, this time without Luna's ult. And that should make it a lot easier. Really awkward way to start that off, though. If only they could have gotten a better Chrono. Also, yeah. Bambo did not get to ult that fight, which is also a big source of their damage. Yeah, I mean, they still held out there. The buyback wasn't too costly. Now, Bambo, he's he's going hunting. He's looking for something himself. Uh, Sing Sing's new pickup here is going to be that completed Mjolnir. He started with the Hyperstone, then built the Maelstrom. Yeah. So, no, this is uh, the build. Like, you have to transition the Marana away from magic damage and into physical if the game goes on. Because she is a, a semi carry that actually can do pretty well with these sort of items. And eventually, you will hit a point where the Aghanim is just. The magic damage pales in comparison to something like an MKB if Luna goes for a butterfly, uh, for example. So, smart plays from Sing Sing to start to transition to have some actual right clicks. Uh, I, I think the Mjolnir is, is pretty cool here as well. Summons from the Beastmasters, a lot of auto attacks, a lot of instances of damage where they should be able to bring out a lot of chain lightnings to return some of it. Yeah, I'm excited. I think Kaipi are building pretty well. We'll see if they can actually execute, because again, we've been talking about their huge lead for the last several minutes now, and they've not really been able to go and pick up any structures. Yeah, they got a tier 2 bottom, but both racks still standing. Yeah, There's but a 30,000 net worth lead, but can they translate that into game winning objectives? Now, Mitch in some trouble. This could be mass TPs onto him. Looks like he's going to roar himself away, but Gem on the down, back no to deal with the chrono. Uh, that's going to be too trapped in the chrono. There's big old missiles uh, to follow up. There's a self-disrupt. And I think they should easily be able to punish Just off everyone game. else. Three heroes dead. No buybacks available. BOTs winning the game for it there. Uh, that's really what it was. Mitch poked out, thought it was a 1v1. All of a sudden, the BOTs arrive, and you got yourself in a sticky situation. I, I, what can elements do at this point? 2v5, even if <laughs> Luna, Luna drops the old. I think it's just... It, they got to have one more big YOLO ult in them. They've got to punish Sexy Bambo that one last time. Yeah. And we'll see. Jumping I mean, forward. They played this really smart. I, I really think there was no pressure on them to end this game. They did such a good job controlling the map. If you watch their movements over the last 10 minutes, they've spent a lot more of their time farming in the enemy jungle than their own. They just made it so that Elements 1 had nowhere to farm, slowly strangling them out. And over time, just look at the gold graph. They just kept pulling further and further ahead, finding little pickoffs here and there. It's not only about killing the oh, structures, if you can keep Luna, finding that farm. Luna Jeez. wants to hit R so bad. Buyback. Here's the alt, Luna. This is you. Go forward. There you go. 
Oh, this is, this is kind of uh, painful to watch. The hey! slow demise of this base. There's the ult. Oh. Lackluster. Tickled Sing Sing a little bit. He leaps back to safety. And uh, uh, they're just going to reset and go for it once more. Yep, they've got Chronosphere to start things off. They do catch up Milan, not the primary target, but they're still able to easily clean him out. And there's going to be uh, the leap forward. Gosh, this Dagon looks like it's very uncomfortable. The roar on the back lines mean Mitch might be able to do some damage. Bone 7 taking a lot does end up falling. Vi's back is going to be able to go back in, but there's going to be the Epi. Oh, golly gee. Goodbye, Luna. She's got no buyback down for 100 seconds. It's up to Vengeful Spirit. Can Core Venge get it done? I and... don't think so. Really good play by Pylai Die there with his ultimate just standing his ground. He got off a full duration death ward pretty much in the face of the Luna and set up for Sexy Bambo to channel that ultimate. And there's the GG. We're yeah. done. <laughs> Venge gets popped and that'll be it. 2-0. Kai P taking the series over Elements 1. They were pretty heavy favorites coming in just based on the odds alone. 45-15. to 15. Pretty convincing series. Yeah, Kai P living up to their reputation and... Pretty exciting games. Bambo with some pretty clutch plays that last match for sure on the same.